You do look sunburnt. Do I? Yeah. Nah. I haven't yeah. even been in the sun. There's nothing to really? do here. It's flat? No. It's completely flat. Summertime is is a rough one here. Sometimes. Yeah, but you just got that you just got that amazing swell. Oh, that wasn't amazing for me. That absolutely sucked. Uh, the swell we're talking about, most of these people live in like Iowa and lift weights all day long. But what we're talking about <laughs> where's, is- Where's uh, your demographic? Is that your demographic, Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> this show's all about working out. And uh, it's <laughs> mostly based in CrossFit. So my, my demo <laughs> is, yeah, it's, it's uh, soccer moms from Iowa that work out a lot. Perfect. Uh, but, uh, and we know that you're really into your working out, Albie. Can't you tell? Yeah. Uh, question. Seriously, yeah, I have a gym um, appointment today. For the record, <laughs> I, we'll get to we'll get to that. But what I wanted to say was, because uh, I this is for my interest, and I'll let them know. There was a swell that came to the south side of South Wells. Come to the south part of places in the summer. You got a huge swell in Hawaii, in a place that doesn't usually break. And I saw it, and it looked like the scariest, fastest wave ever. And it looked like there were 7,000 people out there. Um, yeah, that wave, it's called Ma'alaya. It hasn't broke since I was, or it's broken, but like it's, I mean, you saw how fast it is when it's like, it breaks, but it only gets to like head high at the biggest in the last like 15 years. The last time it broke was like 2005, I think. So what I bet? No, no, no. 2000. Or I was like 15 or something. I'm old. Getting old. Um, but yeah, I don't know why. It's like, because we have all the surrounding islands on the south side. Um, that's like Maui County. It's like Koalave and Molokai and Lanai and all that shit. And blocks all our swell. Um, so it has to be like a perfect degree storm to like funnel in between these two islands to hit that wave. And it hasn't done it yeah, in like 15 years. Mm-hmm. And then it did it. And I've been waiting for 15 years to surf it kind of like good. And I was like, <laughs> especially now that I'm 30, I'm like, oh, I'm 30. I'm going to go fucking take all the waves I want. Like, because I remember last time I surfed it, all the guys that like were my age now back then just took off and everything and they ran the show. And I was like, oh, I'm that age now. So it's and your turn. Yeah, but those guys are still out there, those fuckers. They're like 45 now and still taking all the waves, and I feel bad. <laughs> so I saw I saw on your Instagram uh, two waves that you caught that two people dropped in on you. And for those that don't know, dropping in is basically cutting in line and stealing, but it's dangerous in surfing, especially on a wave of consequence because – they, you can get hurt. They can run into you. You can run into them. You can get caught by the, it just looked like you got crushed both times. Thanks to them. Um, I did. Do you know who it was? Yeah. yeah. I know who both of them were. The second guy, I was a bodyboarder and he kind of, that was fine. Like, cause I was really deep. I would have made the wave, but for what was going on, he totally had the right to drop in on me because no one else He's... was making waves like that. And I didn't yell or anything on that one because I didn't think I was going to make it that far. Um, did you Did you get an apology on the other one? Yeah. That kid was from Kauai, and, um, which is fucking hilarious because like, Kauai has like all the best waves ever, and they don't ever let anyone surf them. They're like super localized and... Which is like cool yeah. in a way, but it'd be fun if, you know, I have a lot of friends over there. If I got to just go surf, like not film or anything, just for fun. And then they so all even, come over here, like when there's a swell and fucking burn me. <laughs> I was pretty mad. So even even as a pro surfer, you can't go over to Kauai and, and, get, and get waves. They're like they're just going to kind of push you out. I mean, I probably could, but um, no, especially as a pro surfer. Like once I'm not sponsored and all that I could probably go, I could go anywhere and get away. It's like people so what, are fine with that. It's like, so what is they it? think they, they, re, they resent you. Well, no, they associate me with filming, which associates uh, yeah. me with like exposing spots and they're very protective over there, which is a good thing um, for sure. But yeah, 
I don't know. It was funny. I, I, I yelled at that kid and kind of told him to go in, and then I felt really bad. And then I realized that I had, like, a profound moment after that swell where I was like, didn't love surfing the same anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I feel like the whole, on days like that, when it's that crowded, there's, like, this hierarchy built up on just being intimidating and being an asshole and like talent has nothing to do with it and it's just the stupidest fucking thing ever i hated it i couldn't believe it i was like i, I was I've, total disbelief. I've seen it with a couple of my buddies that are pro surfers that i've taken out at malibu where i figured people would be excited like hey look who's here we get to watch him surf like when we go in as stand-up comics if like depending on how famous you are, you get to bump people. Like you go into a club, and like if if Kevin Hart walks into the comedy club and I'm about to go on stage, they'll come get me and be like, "Sorry, Eddie, Kevin's gonna go on," um, and he'll bump me. And I step aside and I go, "Okay." And Kevin and I are old friends, so I'll like make fun of him for doing it. But um, but uh, the it's known like it's etiquette. Like here's a guy who's reached these ranks and he gets to go on before you because he's reached that level of success and the crowd wants to see him. They would rather see him than me. <laughs> you know, like imagine if yeah. the crowd's like, we heard Kevin Hart was here, but Eddie if insisted on going on stage, <laughs> the, the, the crowd would be like, what, what, who wait, why? So I have always thought bringing my friends surfing that like people would be like, holy shit, that's so-and-so or that's so-and-so, but they don't, they take off on them. And it's just, there's a, it, it's for guys that are supposed to be the most laid back guys in the world. They're some of the most aggressive assholes I've ever met in my life. Dude. That's what I'm saying is like, I don't, I swear. Like I'm starting to believe that surfing is just a facade, like the whole thing. <laughs> like <laughs> there's supposed to be these like hippies, freaking spiritual guys. And I'm like, where the fuck are they? I haven't seen them. I've traveled this whole world. I don't see them anywhere. Like, I think it's, um, I think the internet's changed it. I blame the internet for everything, everything. Yeah. Like my wife's like, why are we late? I'm like the internet. What, yeah. what, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> why haven't the kids eaten lunch? I'm like the internet. It's, it's a good punching bag, but no, I like surfing is so profoundly selfish and it's, it's trippy to me. I was like, I always thought I would do something good with it. If I like reached a high level, like, you know, start working with surf rider foundation and like cleaning up beaches and stuff. And then I realized that no, like, I don't know. It's hard to do all that shit and no one really does it. And there's only like a couple surfers who like really are like in touch with the ocean. Like that, that like wrote the kind of surfer we romanticize in like film or whatever. I don't know, but there's only a couple of those and most of them are just fucking assholes who will just walk over you to get a wave or paddle over you. It was pretty funny. I was like, I don't know. I'm rethinking like where I want to go in surfing and I want to stay the fuck away from days like that. Well, for people that don't know you, you are a, a big wave surfer, but you're also known for doing really good airs. Uh, you don't do competitions other than big wave competitions. Why? I don't know why, but um, I mean, that'd be a time to get good waves all to yourself. <laughs> No, we did for like 30 minutes, but the whole week yeah. leading up to that, you're practicing with like 80 of the best surfers in the world at one spot. That's a good, that's a good point. That's a good point. I, I travel um, to avoid people. That's why. <laughs> you know, though, as everybody talks about how there's no empty waves, I've gone to places all over the world where I've found really good empty waves. And so Can I feel like, list? yeah, <laughs> no, but like, I guess it's, it's hard to get them consistently. And, no, there's um, there's still those magical moments for sure. But but li they're... living it. Yeah, people would in think <laughs> people would think you sound. Well, I live in the most crowded surf spots in the world. I just yeah. heard Kelly Slater. Kelly said on his new documentary that Malibu might be the most crowded wave in the world. I have <laughs> never like the only time I've ever gotten Malibu good at uh, is at night like surfing, like literally with a full moon. And even then it's kind of crowded. Yeah. I figured a lot of people would still do that, huh? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it was, it was pumping one, like perfect, like head high. And I was like, we're going out. This is going to be great. I got out there and you see like 30 glow sticks in the water. And I was like, really? there's 30, <laughs> there's 30 guys out there right now. Um, it's so, like, it's sad, but it's kind of awesome that people love surfing that much. It's like a, you know, it's cool in a way, but at the same time, it's just like, I don't know. Well, I just I, don't I do think, well in crowds. I think COVID had a lot to do with it and the internet, the internet, everybody saw surfing and they saw, cause the same thing happened in stand up comedy. So I think it's like everything people saw, Oh, this is how people do stand up. Oh, I can probably do that. This is where you do it. This is how you get to do it. This is like, there was just too much information. So I think that happened with surfing. People were like, it used to be, you had to talk to people. Where do I go get a surfboard? How do I get fins? What, what, how do I put them in? Where do I, how do I paddle out? And kind of had to figure out a lot yourself. Now there's a video that'll show you how to do everything. So, yeah. I know. It's just like everything now. Uh, so, but, yeah. And plus like COVID everyone just watched surf movies. Like everyone who kind of surfed, like watched surf movies that came out from like everyone every surfer who was stuck at home was making surf movies of their home so i think everyone was just excited to go somewhere as soon as everything opened up and now everyone's everywhere and which is like totally understandable i just yeah did you guys know with this storm that came through that brought uh that made freight trains that good did you guys know the exact angle you needed for it to hit and you saw it coming and you were like, that's the angle. Yeah, for sure. So that's, well, I, so that's why everyone I, remembers last time, like people write down numbers for swells like that. And then, so, and it, so we have a how many, forecast. Go ahead. How many days did you have before it came that people knew about it? For us, it's like, um, when we get a big south swell, sorry, garbage truck going by. Um, it's super obvious for us because it'll hit Tahiti first, and so I saw that it's like an well. easy gauge. Like once you see how big Tahiti is, you can guess pretty closely what it's gonna be here. And I think it's like three days from Tahiti, maybe something like that, two or three days. I could be wrong, but were were you tempted to go to Tahiti for that? No, <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I don't like that wave. I've... I've towed. That's a f- funny. I've only um towed big chokes once, and it was to do um stunts for that Point Break thing. Um, point Break that Two. Point Break thing. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, the second Point Break, it's fucking terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm not allowed to say that, but it's such a bad movie. But you know, you know, it's hilarious. Never watched it. Look at this, dude! Just deposited another residual check from it. <laughs> Still making money. <laughs> I literally just got done doing that. <laughs> is it like my residual? This. Is it how much was it? Dude, it was three hundred bucks. It's usually like fourteen dollars, and for some reason, I was reason, just going to this... say my my residual checks are like fourteen dollars or three dollars. Yeah, my yeah. wife and I always my wife and I always play a game when they come when I see a check from SAG, and we go how how little do you think this one is? <laughs> yeah, same. But this one was like ten times more than usual, and I don't know why. That'd be- that means they like re-upped it for like ten years on Netflix or something. Uh, no, no, no! It was all I have the mark out. It was all pay TV, which is like, I swear it just it. does super well in Asia. That's where like all the money is coming from for that thing. Well, wait. So you were the? Didn't you have to do a wipeout in it? You were told to wipe out. Well, they didn't. They couldn't legally tell me the fall because I think they would have had to pay me more. So, like, it was so funny the way they did it. The whole thing was such a funny experience for me because, like, I've never been a part of that world. And, and like, um, for people that don't know, like, uh, Hollywood has just never gotten close to capturing surfing in any way that makes surfers happy. Except for Surf's Up, the Penguin movie. That was as close as they ever got. That movie is fucking fire. (laughs) I'm not even kidding. I swear that's the best one by a long shot. My, my kids watch it all the time. It's so good. That's like one of my favorite movies ever. But anyway, <laughs> so it was like, it was really funny because I, um, they came to Jaws for a swell before they did the Tahiti shoot. 
and they didn't include me like no one hit me up to like try to do the stunts they had like five or six guys like on these red boards like wearing these outfits trying to film some stunts and um i was kind of frustrated with them they just like you know they're just a huge obnoxious hollywood crew like showing up and just you know it's just it's just a lot especially at your like local surf break and i remember they they tried to say they could clear the water <laughs> Like they said they had a permit to clear the water at Jaws, and we only get a couple swells a year, and that's like my life is surfing that wave, and it's like, you know, it's a couple miles from my house. It's really special to me. And some guy, like, showed up on a jet ski and tried to tell me to clear the water, like one of the producers, and I was just like, get the fuck out of here. And I was like, go, go fuck yourself. I'm not going to go in. I was like, that's not how this works. And it was so funny, because then I ended up meeting the guy, because one of my friends is doing stunts, and and then he got me the job in Tahiti. And um, then I got to meet the guy. I told the fuck off. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm sorry. You know, they're like hiring me. And I'm making good money. And I'm showing yeah. up at someone else's break and ruining it. <laughs> I was like, you I'm actually, a fucking hypocrite. <laughs> that's hilarious. You you actually had every right to tell them to fuck off, though. And for anyone listening, uh, whenever there's a movie set and they try to tell you to leave the area, 99% of the time they don't have a right to tell you to leave, especially out in the ocean. And so they'll, they'll end up paying you to leave. So just stay there till they pay you. Like, yeah. Re- I like that. Rev your, rev your car engine. Like if they tell you to move your car, just sit there and <laughs> like get, get soap and wash your car and they'll end up giving you like a thousand bucks to leave. Uh, yeah. It's, it's like the greatest thing about film sets. Just like actually go like, go like build a birdhouse or something like right in the middle of their set. Like they will, they'll pay you so much money. To, just keep saying no. And they'll keep up, upping the price till they can get you out of there. Cause you'll ruin their whole day. And uh, it, like, they had no right to tell you to get out of the water. No, but they I didn't like have the, a permit. But I like that you bitch. And then you went and did the same exact thing at show poop. Yeah. To someone else. And that was, that whole scene was crazy. Um, like a couple of locals got in a fight cause they like, same thing they were trying to clear the water and a couple of locals were like no there was like a full fight in the water and shit it was like such a shit show and it was a huge day but that was the only time i ever towed tahiti um had you ever been there before had you ever been there before yeah i went there um once or twice before i got it really really good i paddled it like as as good as it gets um and so i knew the way but i'd never seen it towing and it's just the it's such a crazy thing. It's just like you get whipped into the wave behind a jet ski for those who don't know that's what toe surfing is. And um they it's just such a quick, like crazy little moment that you gotta kick out before it like closes out and goes into the lagoon. But um one of the other stuntmen was Lori Towner. He's an Australian. He's um he's like one of my favorite surfers, like my idol. He's he's like probably like five or six years older than me i think but i always like really admired him um and so he was like we were both playing um johnny utah which is the funniest thing because that's like a character from the first one that we've made fun of forever like just like in between each other just go johnny like forever and i was like holy shit i get this stunt man johnny utah this is so funny um but anyway so he he was um the first Johnny Utah, I was Johnny Utah too. And um, so he gets whipped in. Laird's driving him and uh, he, Laird's driving Johnny Utah all day and Laird's playing himself. So they want shots of us towing into waves, just a couple normal waves at first. And then we're going to do this doubles wave. And they're towing Laurie in, who's like my idol. He gets like one sick one. It's like really big. I've never seen it that big. And, and then he gets his like second or third wave. And it's just like, it comes from the super west direction and just basically closes out and for those who don't know Tahiti's like really shallow reef and it's like like a beautiful lagoon and the wave breaks outside of the lagoon and then there's like a 50 feet of like dry reef in between the wave and the lagoon or like maybe 100 feet i don't know and then it's like two feet deep in the lagoon but um he falls on the wave and we're like sitting on this floaty, like waiting our turn, like kind of looking at the wave in the channel. And I like look and I, I see him come up and there's like the part at the end of the wave, it's a left and it breaks into this right. And it's really, really shallow, like right on the edge of the lagoon. 
and I see him come up and I just see his face is just covered in blood and he's oh like gosh. pretty much unconscious and he's oh, like no. swimming like down and I was just like what the fuck <laughs> and then the second wave lands on him and we're like looking and I don't see him and like Laird's trying to get to him on the jet ski and I just see him face down in the lagoon like look like he was dead and I was like oh, holy God. shit and this guy's like mind you like my idol <laughs> And I was just like, what the fuck? And, and, and you then Laird, next. <laughs> yeah, Laird just pulls up, grabs him, throws him on the ski. He wakes up and he like, Laird just buzzes to the, um, they have like a medical belt, a medical boat on site, drops him off, like buzzes up to the <laughs> floaty or single on. He's just like in his big Laird way. Just, All right, he's done. I'll be your up. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean he's done? He's like, oh, he's not going to do any more stunts for this. And I was like, is he okay? <laughs> he's like, no, no, no. He's got to go to the hospital. He'll be all right, probably. And then he, like, grabs me and, like, throws me on the rope. And I was like, holy shit, this is so wild. But, yeah, I ended up doing fine. Like, But at the end of it, they were like, okay, like, in the scene, um, what's the other guy's name? Brody. Bro- what's Bodie. 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 Yeah, yeah. Like I was, he was played by um, what's his name, Edgar Ramirez, I think. He was super cool, but um, so his character they like cross paths on the wave, and Johnny Utah goes behind Brody and eats shit. But like the way they're like, so like in the scene he eats shit, but like you don't have to. But like yeah. we we need footage of him eating shit, but like like it, we can make it happen. <laughs> so they couldn't like tell me to eat shit, but they did tell me to eat shit. <laughs> But it was such a weird experience, man. So when you but, get pummeled by that wave, does it kick you out the back? It can. The craziest part is sometimes you fall. Um, yeah, they, the, the locals called it like the hand of God for a while, and it's just like there's it's so hollow and cylindrical. What the word I'm looking cylindrical. for? Cylindrical. Cylindrical. There we go. Cylindrical. <laughs> But, like, all the air that's inside the barrel gets trapped, and it'll just blow out the back. And um, sometimes you can fall on, like, the biggest wave ever, and you're literally under for, like, one second and just get blown out the back. Um, oh, that sounds like my dream. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> yeah, you don't want to <laughs> roll the dice too many times on that one. Because the other option is, like, I one time fell, and it's crazy because there's, like, like I said, there's, like, 50 to 100 feet of dry reef between you and the lagoon. And the lagoon's, like, mm-hmm. calm water. You know, and it's like the reef's like this far out, but waves wash over it and you can fall and just get really pounded and you just come up in the lagoon and you like look out and there's like a hundred feet of dry reef you just went over and like somehow you didn't touch it because you're just like in the white water. water Yeah, it's so wild. It's like the wildest thing ever. You just come up and you're just sitting in a lagoon like you fall like a 15 foot wave and you're just sitting in like a peaceful lagoon (laughs) it's like the most bizarre thing ever i like the biggest wave i've ever surfed is like australia at like 10 foot or something 10 foot face and i like cried like a baby so i can't even like fathom what you guys do but i watch it and i know what it's like when i've been smashed when i've just like really gotten like pounded like hit the bottom of the sand i'm like how did that happen and then i watch guys on kayaks go over waterfalls and they'll go down like a like a hundred foot waterfall, and you're like, "What are you doing? <laughs> like, like, don't you think you're gonna die? Because everyone else does. Like, dude, you know a surfer oh. has like, but they basically just jump like oh, this. This could be it. Yeah, and plus it doesn't end the waterfall. I, there was one that just went viral recently, like one of those kayak clips that was so psycho. But I guess you're attached to the floaty kayak. You must trust that, right? Have you ever kayaked? Like whitewater? Yeah. Barely. It's, like, I mean, I did it with my family like in Virginia. When you roll over, you got to pull that oh strap to release yourself. And I asked my friend who taught me to kayak, I said, what if I'm unconscious? He goes, then you're dead. <laughs> I was like, oh, no I was like that. So like, I go, if I hit my head on a rock, he's like, yeah, somebody might get to you. I go, Maybe. might. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't seem very safe to me. Kayaking seems like way worse than even surfing. But I I don't think people realize how dangerous and how physical 
surfing is, especially like the physicality of like your wipeouts. And I can, because I've only done it to like a certain extent, I can only equate it to like, there's nothing like I played football. It's like way worse than getting hit by like a linebacker, you know, like coming through the line. It's way worse than like, there have been times when I think my like arms are coming off my body, like spinning. And I'm like, but I watch you guys do it. Like one wipeout like that for me. And I like, I'm like, I think I'll sit a couple out now. You guys, like, especially like I'll watch a contest. It's just like, oh, they'll do it eight times in 20 minutes. They'll just take yeah. eight huge wipeouts. That, um, yeah, watching that Jaws event, they, people suck. They just, because it's like the big stage, you know, and everyone, there's like a way more wipeouts than there would be on a free surf. That's why I'm like not that excited about that contest anymore. Well, that's um, the one you got hurt, right? Yeah, Is that the- I got caught up in the hype. That was one. I took off on this wave and I went straight, which you don't do on big waves. Um, and the lip landed directly like, it was probably like a 40 foot face wave or something. Like it was a really, really big wave and it was really thick. And the lip landed like right in front of me as I was trying to outrun it. And I ended up like with a really bad concussion. I, I, honestly got probably pretty close to drowning and yeah the concussion fucked me up for like i'm just honestly never been the same um not that bad anymore but for a while there i was like depressed i was pretty much crazy for like a year and a bit um but yeah like that's why i just don't like this contest people get too excited and just go too hard and those what? those white pods suck now that i'm when I was 19, they weren't that bad. But now that I'm 30, they fucking they last a lot longer. It's like hangovers. It's just like hangovers. Or like I used to be able to just get messed up one night, and friggin' next day I'm fine. And now it's like a week of just feeling like depressed and like shit. And big wave wipeouts are kind of the same thing now. Yeah, it's, I used to be able to paddle right back out. Now I'm just like, all right, I think I'm well, not gonna do anything the end of for the next three it, days. It, it, the testosterone starts shutting off. The human growth hormone stops. And now it's like you just turn into an old man. <laughs> it's, so sad. it's so sad because I'm not going to name names, but we know there are guys out there that are, you know, doing testosterone and human growth hormone. And it's, it makes a huge difference. You can handle everything better. You know, like I've talked to drug dealers that deal that kind of stuff and they're like oh yeah you feel like an 18 year old again you'll shoot loads across the room they're like, <laughs> knock a chick out. <laughs> they're like you they're like you just you you don't know what it's like and i'm like why well, I, I i do know what it's like because i was 18 once and i would like to feel that way again but i'm kind of nervous about putting an exogenous drug in my body a hormone <laughs> that i don't know like what it's going to do is my head going to grow. Am I going to lose more hair than I've already lost? You know, like, yeah, I, I'm nervous about that shit. It's funny. I'll, I'll keep my hair. I'll keep my hair over everything. Oh yeah. Maybe that's what if I need to do, dude. Since I don't have contests and stuff, no one's tested me for drugs. If I really want to just, you know, stretch out the career, I could just go the full roid route. <laughs> you don't think there are guys that do it? No, I know there are. I see them all yeah, the time. I mean, the I mean, a lot of pro surfers. Yeah. yeah, there's tons of them out there, and yeah, and I would say deer antlers and shit. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, that, that's one, uh, right? That's the one people my, do. My buddy does deer antler all the time, <laughs> 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 and he tells me I'm crazy for not doing it. <laughs> He's like, "Man, you, you got to get on the deer antler." I'm like, "What? Do you snort it? Do you do you drink it? What is it?" No, they snort it, right? Don't they like grind yeah, up deer antler and snort it? I swear people do that. I don't do know. That. Here, here, I'll tell you what it says. It does. I don't think it works. I think it's one of those fake ones. I think deer antler yeah, does. No shit. Uh, it's all placebo. Like. <laughs> I've had on this show, I've had some serious steroid guys that'll tell you like what works and what doesn't work for what. I would imagine for surfing, you'd probably want to do something like EPO. EPO, this, it's the same stuff that like Lance Armstrong did because it's going to give you better <laughs> endurance. Um, like you're just going to be able to paddle all day and yeah, you can't get able- bulky. That's why I've never seen a good surfer. Who's like super jacked. 
Uh, Name one. To say. Uh, or a comedian. Joe Piscopo yeah. and Carrot Top. <laughs> that's, that's what's um, Rogan. That's funny Rogan about comedy. Connect. You guys get judged on looks a lot, huh? No, but like, you, as a chick, if you're hot, you soar to the top. If yeah, you're a dude and you're good looking, it's the world's against you. I yeah, no, that's that I what see. I mean. Yeah. Oh, nobody like thinks you're funny. Funny looking, you're looking. Like, yeah. Being funny looking is such a huge, huge start in comedy, I feel like. That's oh, what's cool about comedy, though. Right I've been now. thinking about that hold, now that I'm. Hold, um, hold on one second. We're freezing up. Oh, what is it? Um, what's going on? Something wrong with yours? Oh, if you have any uh, open windows other than the Zencaster, close them. Oh, okay. That can slow it down. Um, I got some pretty fast internet here, dude. First yeah, time well, in my uses, life. It uses crazy, crazy, uh, like this new thing that I use, this Zencaster use a lot. Uh, yeah, comedians like like Lachlan Patterson, my buddy that I surf with, is he's really good looking. He's like male model good looking. And uh, he's a really funny comedian. And he'd be like a star, except he like walks in the room. People are like, Oh fuck this guy. <laughs> exactly. Right. Like <laughs> I always thought about that when we talked about doing that project, I was like, what would like, it must be so weird. Cause like being like a fat dude is just a huge, you're like already starting a little funny, you know, <laughs> like, oh, a little, <laughs> cause a little. people are assholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm an average looking guy. Average. For a comedian, I'm good looking, and it's. Like I know, me. I know. It's hurt. It looks like it hurts you. I, I can totally see it. It really does. Guys look at me like, "Oh fuck this guy!" I don't, and I do it too, because there's like good looking comedians, and I'll see them, and I'll be like, "Oh, what's what's this guy doing here? Why is he?" Yeah, because be, <laughs> be you want to like, you want to hear them complain about shit, and when you hear a good looking person complain about something, you're just like, you know what? You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to an audition once in New York. And I walk in and it's for Campari soda, which is like a European soda. And I walk in, I look around the room and there's, there's always like different audition rooms, like maybe like five on the floor. And so I walk in and I go to Campari soda and I go to sign up. I look at all the guys sitting, waiting to go in and they're all good looking dudes, like models. And I, and I'm like, and I look at my audition and I'm like, Campari, I'm like, Maybe I'm better looking than I think I am. <laughs> <laughs> Just talk yourself and, up like that. And so, so I, I'm about to sign in and the casting director comes out of the room and I go, Hey, uh, can I ask you a question? She goes, yeah. I go, am I at the right audition? And she's like, huh? And I like, I go like, look, look at them, <laughs> look at them. And she goes, Oh yeah, you're at the right one. And I was like, really? And she goes, yeah, we, she goes, we wanted to try a goofy guy. And see, see if, <laughs> if the director would like a goofy guy. And I'm like, wow, oh, okay. And then at the time I was really out of shape. Uh, she calls us into the room and it's like all these good looking dudes and all these hot models, these girls. And she goes, okay, so you're on a deserted beach. So guys, we're going to need you to take your shirt off for the audition. And like, sh she didn't even finish the statement. And all these dudes are ripping their shirts off. Like, did you say take your shirt off? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, goofy guy too? <laughs> Does the goofy guy have to take his shirt off? And uh, it, was a, it was just brutal. It was... <laughs> See, but um, on the on the other hand, surfers are like the most attractive people in the world. So yeah. I'm, <laughs> I don't make the cut, <laughs> even though I feel I'm not don't have the terrible self image. I do when I hang out with just surfers. I'm like these fucking assholes, like <laughs> the most beautiful people in the world. And then well, their companies like they do model shoots where they convince people they're beautiful, even if they're not. Hurley was really good at that. Remember the black and white ads? They can make anyone look like a supermodel. <laughs> I was telling John John, I was like, dude, I, he, he, like everyone thought John John was super hot. I was like, John, <laughs> could I grow up with? 
he's super hot now. I was like, he's got a shitty little beard and stuff. I was like, come on. But the dude, he just, they, they ran those black and white ads of his face for so long where it's like perfect lighting and everything. And then like all of a sudden he's like the hot kid. And I was like, oh, God damn it. I was like, that, where's that, my, that beard, where's my model shoot? That beard he has is very, uh, very uh, shaggy from Scooby Dooish. It's like, it's like whiskey. It's, it's like, filled in a little bit. I he actually randomly called me the other day because I haven't talked to him in forever, um, just to laugh at me because I was complaining about the swell. But it's filled in a little bit. I think he's he's been spending a lot of time on his boat and he's starting to get a little grow, earn his beard a little more. <laughs> it was starting to look like the, it was starting to look like that guy in uh, uh, what was it Gremlins? You know that sold them the Gremlin. <laughs> You know, it was like know. it was like a cu- couple hairs just coming out of a mole yeah. on his face. <laughs> I made fun of him a lot for that, but he's he stuck it out. Now he actually has a beard, and I'm proud of him. <laughs> and is he done surfing? He's hurt again, right? Um, I don't know how hurt he is. He, he actually just um, it was so funny because we were talking about um a little bit about like what to do after surfing, maybe um. And, and he, he was said, just all I'm just going to retire and sit on my money. <laughs> I'm just going to roll in my money pile. <laughs> I was like, that's dope. Probably go work construction for the rest of my life. Fuck you. <laughs> um, um, but he was like, yeah, I'm go- he's going sailing for like three weeks or like, or no, like three months down to Tahiti from Hawaii right now. And I was like, must be nice, man. <laughs> must be nice to own that boat. <laughs> it well, sounds like the best trip ever. You guys but, do have a shelf life of a certain age, huh? What is it? Um, it, it depends. Like, um, I mean, it's stupid to compare it to Kelly Slater because he broke yeah, all those shelf a, lives. He has he no has expiration date. Yeah. He's all GMO and no expiration yeah. date. It stays good yeah. forever. Elon, <laughs> Elon, Elon Musk charges them every night. <laughs> yeah. He might be like Kelly Slater, Mark Six on this point. We just don't know. He's just got clones. He's been pulling out of the closet. <laughs> anyway, um, but besides that, I don't know. It depends what you do because the big wave thing I can do for like people do that into like you know there's big wave guys that are fifty and stuff like because it just there's only a couple days a year you really got to go hard so. Mm-hmm it's doable into your old age. The air surfing thing, like I'm almost old for that game at this point. Like there's not that many guys my age. My like best friend, Matt, is really good at air and he's two years older Matt than me, Viola. but he's a, yeah, he's a little freak gymnast body, like double jointed. I don't know. He's just, he's gifted. Yeah, you're, pre- you're, you're pretty big for a guy that can do airs. I am the biggest guy who still does airs by probably yeah. like 30 pounds, I swear. So have you ever landed and done, well, you fucked up your hips. Yeah, that was oh, kind of Was that a genetic tear. thing? No, it was like wear and tear and a couple big wipeouts. I had to get labrum repair on both hips. Um, I'm going to need a fake hip. 10 years, probably. 15, hopefully. 10 years. But, um. We'll see about that, but no, I'm I'm probably the biggest guy who tries to do airs by a long shot. Like it's, I'm 200 pounds and like six two and a half or something. Like I'm a big person to be a surfer, <laughs> and it's just and, and surfing that's like pretty much universally negative. Besides like doing turns, because you think it'd be good in big waves, but I swear it just makes big waves look smaller and like. Most of the best big wave surfers are guys like Dorian, who's like fucking five five. He's ripped, but he's tiny. Yeah, I swear it helps them. Like for some reason, I don't know. But there's advantages of being tall that not not that many. I, I swear. I need I need to tall. know I need to know what screwed up your hips. Um, freaking. Well, I, there's like this way I always fall that probably caused the initial tear in the labrum. Um, when I do like an air trick, my back foot sometimes when I'm landing from however far up, like um, this is me standing on my board. Wait, where? Let's get a pin here. 
Here we go. Ripping. <laughs> when I do an air, and like you want to land either coming down or like landing backwards. And when I land in the middle, my like rotation makes my back foot slip off. And I just go like this and do these like splits. Yeah. And like my front leg like folds on the board. And um, that fall, I think, caused the they're like the labrum is the um, yeah rim of your hip socket or shoulder socket. And it causes a tear, and then bone rubs against bone once there's a tear. And I didn't know this. Do you know this? I didn't know this before my injury, but when bone rubs against bone, it makes the bones get bigger. It's like a callus. Yeah. Which is yeah, like weird. Calc- that like, yeah, calcification. calcification. Yeah. But it just, and then it tears up the labrum even more. So that was like my injury I had where I had to get surgery on both hips like five weeks apart, and I was out for like. You, you, you did the same thing to both hips? Yeah, one was worse than the other. My left hip's always been worse, but I think I have like a tear in my hip flexor on that side too. You you went to that dude at uh he went to my Dr. university. Dr. Philippon. Yeah, Philippon. He he's from Pitt, uh where I went to school. He uh he was at what? Stedman Clinic in Vail? Yeah. Dude, it was a pretty cool experience. That's like one thing that um a silver lining of like quite a few injuries I have, like I learned so much just from going there and like talking to him and shit. And we filmed the whole second surgery, which was kind of fun. He was funny though. Like I got to watch all the surgery videos after, um, the, you're the, you're the second guy on this show that went to him. Yeah. Oh dude, you go in there. There's every Jersey of like from Brady to freaking Messi to every single athlete of all time, pretty much. Um, but That's I guess he clinic. does hockey goalies all the time because oh, the way they move is yeah. like exactly like how I fall. Um, so that like fucks up their hips a lot. But anyway, it was like we we asked him like, oh, can we film it? Like just in case I do something cool after and we wanted to make a movie, which didn't happen. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, no, there's no great comeback story. <laughs> Unfortunately, could still happen. Maybe we'll be glad we have that footage. But the anesthesiologist was like, oh, I don't like being filmed. And he's like, no, I'll, I'll like mess up if I'm being filmed. He's like, can you just not film my part? And we're like, no, I'll mess like, up. I might kill him. <laughs> dude, he literally said that. We were like, we talked him down. We're like, dude, you're going to be fine. Like, we need to film the whole thing. Like, it'll be super fine. He's like, no, no, no. I don't want to be filmed. He's like, <laughs> he's like, and we're like, we finally like talked him into it. He's like, okay, just like make sure I can't tell you're filming me. And of course, like, um, so they give me all the drugs and um, like the first round of did you drugs. Get like an ep- like, did, you get an epi- did you get an epidural? So yeah, he's doing the spinal tap for the epidural. Right. And um, he, um, and my friend, um, my like really good friend here, this girl, Lindsay, who's um, like my gym trainer, physical therapist kind of person. This Wait, is she the one friend. we were surfing? With? Is she the one we were surfing with when I broke my elbow? No, no, no. That's Hank's girlfriend, Malia. But they okay. work in the same place, actually. But um, okay. I was with Li- Lindsay wanted to come just to watch the surgery because she's just fascinated by that kind of stuff. And so I'm in the room and they're doing the um, they give me the first round of drugs. So I'm like loopy as fuck. And so she the guy, wait, she wait, she flew to Colorado to watch a surgery. Yeah. Well, they did like they went snowboarding and made a trip. My uh, girlfriend okay. at the time and her were like best friends. So okay. they like um did a trip together and it was and, my, and then my buddy dan filmed but they gave me all the drugs i'm super loopy and i'm in my gown ass out don't give a fuck because i'm like high as a kite and it's time to for the guy to do the spinal tap like so he sticks a needle like hits your spine and epidural which shuts down your legs like they do for pregnant people um and he's fucking going and i'm like i'm i kind of remember this like just a little bit and he just has this huge hook needle and he's just going and he just dans just a chorus gets all in like with the camera and he's just like oh, God. like you can tell he's just flustered in the footage and he just goes and just i can feel him hitting my spinal cord and like <laughs> just like missing and i was just like oh no and i'm like grimacing in the footage and there's like blood coming down my back I think he even like looked at the guy and was just like i told you like i don't like being filmed <laughs> and like he eventually I- got it but um, I guess if they do it just slightly wrong, you can just go. Like I had a numb spot in my knee for like six months after. 
and like a, it was super drippy but like really minor but um it was the footage was let, freaking let, hilarious let, let me now tell you let me now tell you what can go wrong My <laughs> oh wife, yeah you can after her yeah, uh, during her second pregnancy came out and she was just like she's sitting in bed and she's like my head hurts so bad. She's like, I'm getting this really bad headache. Getting... So I call a nurse and I go, uh, something's wrong with her. And they're like, she's got a headache. And they're like, oh, she needs to drink some caffeine right now. So I Google caffeine, headache, epidural. And, uh, and I read this thing that the, the guy put too big of a hole and spinal fluid is like was draining out. out of her head. Right. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I call and I go, can you get me the anesthesiologist? He comes in. This is not the guy who did it to her. This is just the guy that's on call. He comes in, he goes, what's going on? I tell him and he looks at me and he goes, he goes, who is our anesthesiologist? And I tell him the name and he goes and rolls his eyes. And I'm like, what? Like, and he's like, ah, uh, and I'm like, you can't do that. You can't like <laughs> roll your eyes about a doctor who stuck a needle in my wife's spine and just be like, you should be like, ah, oh, you know, I've done everything I can to get that guy fired. <laughs> but, yeah. But he goes, he goes, look, she needs a procedure done right now. So they, they took blood out of her and then injected it right in to create like a clot so that her spinal fluid wouldn't drain out anymore. Yeah. No, I've heard about that. And no, the anesthesiologist I had too was the best. He did my other one perfectly. He just literally has stage fright with cameras, which is kind of Yeah, funny. I don't blame him. I don't blame yeah. him. No one wants to be judged like that i got yeah. a i went to the stedman clinic once i've got a, a big scar right under here i fell a skiing i just a, the worst fall ever and i went down do you know who shane mcconkney is yeah like probably the greatest skier of all time and we were just yeah. watching him one day we're, we're hitting this like thing called the whoopee and he was doing it we were all skiing it and uh everybody was watching him because he was like the greatest ever and i went down and I cut myself pretty bad and they had to sew me up. And then I went right back up to ski. Cause I was like, you know, I was like 19. I'm like, you don't, you yeah. don't take a minute off. And, um, he thought it was like the craziest thing that I came back out and he's like, Oh bro, you're skiing the whoopee. He sounded like, <laughs> uh, he sounded just like Polly Shore. He's like, you going up to ski the whoopee again, but, he's a G. Uh, he was he he was the best. But I wanted to ask you about that. Like you were saying, all these young kids, like it's easy when you're young, blah blah blah. And I feel like the internet. I've had a lot of like X Games athletes on this show. I feel like they push themselves really hard, really young, and then the accident happens, and then they all go, "Uh, I'm going to pull back a little." Some of them, yeah, some of the some of them, the ones that don't end up dead. But but there's always this like pullback of like. Well, I can only, yeah, I can only do big waves because it's a couple days a year, or I can only do this or only do that. Um, yeah, I it's trippy. Like the, the trippy part about surfing is, is it takes like a fucking lifetime to like learn to read the ocean, as you know, like, so like a lot of sports like skateboarding and stuff, you see the best kids getting younger and younger. That's because their bodies are like. Rubber. Just little rubber bands, like so easy. And, um, but surfing has this weird thing where, like, you can't, like, learn surfing quick because of how hard it is to read the ocean and every way is different. So it's like this weird thing where you get better at one part of surfing, like, and by the time you, like, are the best you're going to be at that, your body's already fallen off. <laughs> like, it can't do the things you want to do. Which is like such a funny like like um, catch twenty two. It's like so hard, but like right now, like I'm thirty one. I I honestly like started to feel like like I was getting older, um, just with the injuries and shit, and I was like slowing down. But I, who my my buddy who I've done a lot of my film projects with, Dan was just like, dude, you stop saying that shit. Like you're like not yeah. getting worse, and so he yeah. made me and like. You're also you're also pretty young. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I'm when I say old, it's it's compared to fucking the average pro surfer, which is freaking nine year old these days. Anyway, <laughs> um, and you're and you're not Brazilian, so you got that yeah, answer. that's true. But I I recently did a trip to that wave pool in Waco, which is like um, 
um, it's just like a, it's a fake wave and there's an air section that everyone rides and you see footage of it all year round you see which tricks are being done and all that stuff. And like the little kids kind of took over that wave because it's the same as skateboarding where it's like a set thing. So the younger you are, the better off you are. And me and Matt went because Rockstar was a, is like a sponsor of it now. And we got a lot of time in the pool, which is like, because usually only get like an hour or two hours, or whatever. And we got like, like six hours over a weekend or something. And we actually like did almost every trick that's been in that pool. And I was like, fuck, you know what? Like, I'm not getting worse yet. Like, I think I'm still getting better. I can do all the tricks that all the little kids did. And I was like, fuck yeah. Like, it's harder for me because it's a smaller wave to me, you know? And it's like, it's harder to get high in the air. But I've, after watching I've that seen... footage, I felt better. I was like, oh, you know what? I can do all these fucking tricks these kids do. <laughs> I've, seen, I've, I've seen you skateboard. And you're good at skate, but you're nowhere near as good as you are at surfing. Like no, you're not at skateboarding. No, you don't suck. You're a good skateboarder, but you're not a pro level skateboarder. And but did you learn the moves first skating, and then transfer them to surfing, or did you just try them surfing? No, I pretty much just tried them surfing. I mean, I'd skated a little when I was young, but I I learned it from watching other sports a lot. Like a lot of the shit I try. I watch a ton of snowboarding. I never really like watch that much skating. Something about it just doesn't translate as well to me. Like I feel like the angles people go off the lip snowboarding and like the tricks they try are the, it's more rotation based, not like flicking the board out and catching it, you know, like, right, right, right. That that doesn't translate to surfing at all. Where like, but like winding up for a trick and then hucking and like grabbing and rotating and then releasing and like, that always related to me. So I watch a ton of snowboarding to figure out like how to do a couple of the tricks that I got to do. Do you, do you, do you, do you attribute your being good at airs to living in Maui and having all that wind? Yeah, it's, it's partly that it's also that I don't like surfing in crowds and, um, cause good waves are typically like typical good waves are glassy, you know, long peeling. Yeah breaks one way or another like a point break like malibu like your basic right, right, good wave right, right. um and you get good at surfing if you surf good waves like you get good at surfing good waves right. where like i hated surfing when it was like that because there was just too many people and i just i don't do like i said it before i don't do well in crowds like i know all people don't want to surf in crowds but like I start like panicking, like shaking, having like nervous twitches and shit. <laughs> like, yeah, but I'm the I, opposite. I watch, I watch you, and I watch it. What you surf, like I like, I like it. Glassy as fuck, and you know. But I watch you, and you're always in this chopped up shit out in the middle of nowhere with like this onshore wind. And I think to myself, that paddle out has to be atrocious. <laughs> like, just like, aren't you exhausted when you just get out there? No, it's not the paddle out. Usually our paddle out's not bad. So we surf into um, side shore is like our favorite win. So when you like flick your board into the wind, it stays on your feet. Right. Um, the Maui guys didn't invent it, but we definitely made it like a popular thing. Like over the last like freaking 15 years or whatever. People always thought like onshore was good for airs, but onshore sucks for airs. I said side, um, side. It's all side shore. They call it, they used to call it devil wind because it's like the choppiest it gets and it, and it crosses up the face so we like would seek that out just because we wanted to surf alone and that was like the conditions and then we realized how good it was for airs um so yeah that's kind of why i think we got good at airs is because we just wanted to surf alone and the conditions that you surf alone are good for airs the paddle and Ma- Ma- maui's fucking no it's not the paddle out. the paddle out's easy it's fucking trying to stay in place when there's 30 knot winds like so you never stop paddling. That's the weird part. Uh, and a lot like, of our airwaves too, you want current going through them because it creates like better sections. So we're just sitting in freaking current paddling into the wind for hours. <laughs> it's it's tough. So, so that gets you like, you're a perfect example. This shows usually we talk about like workouts or fitness or strength and condition. Your fitness totally comes from your passion rather than like, you don't, you don't appear to me that like, you're like, I know you said you're going to the gym, but I don't see you as like taking the gym very seriously. 
what are you talking about, dude? What are you talking let's be, about? Let's let let <laughs> what I'm talking about is the fact that you you your fitness all comes from surfing. No, no. Okay, so I'm and you mountain I, bike. I mountain bike all the time, which is like probably my biggest fitness is climbing up that hill and just getting passed by six year olds on e bikes nowadays and just pissed me off. <laughs> It's awful. It's the awful. e-bike thing is crazy, but that's another conversation. But no, I mountain, of- I mountain bike, I mountain bike with a group of guys, and they all ride e-bikes, and I ride a hardtail with them, and they're like, "Why don't you get an e-bike?" And I'm like, "Why don't I just get a dirt bike? Why are you guys yeah. out here? This doesn't make sense." Yeah, why don't you give me fifteen grand for a good e-bike, Dick? Yeah, true. true. <laughs> well, hey, special specialized. I thought I was getting one. Where'd that, oh, yeah, what happened dude. to that? Shout them out. Yeah. I'm just yeah. kidding. I would love an e-bike. Just if anyone wants to yeah, specialized. Albie would like a, an e-bike. No, Who's I'm your shitting buddy? on them. Uh, so when I flip, I can flip and tell that story. So if anyone wants to send me one, I'll be like, you know what? Actually, they're really great. <laughs> like, <laughs> they, ha- they add more accessibility to mountain biking. <laughs> you, know, you know your buddy, Casey Dean? Yeah. Do you know Did Casey? You see yeah, did you see when both his mountain bikes got stolen? No. Oh yeah. Is that recently? It was, no, it was like a year ago. Yeah, I surfed with Casey once. He took me out and he's like, he's a psychopath. He took oh, me he's out a and he's beast. like he took me out in these close out waves like at Ventura and he's like, Come on, it's gonna be really fun. And he's like, just I mean, you get killed every time, but it's fun. <laughs> he, he's like he's so gnarly at mountain biking and at skiing that he like Came into surfing with very little fear, and he surfed <laughs> waves that were so much gnarlier than his talent. But yeah, it made him get better a lot quicker. <laughs> but I remember watching him surf sometimes, and I was like, "Holy shit, dude, he gets smoked!" But then he like because he's not scared, he, he like improves a lot quicker when you don't have that he, like you know fear. Yeah, he took he took me to head high closeout wave in Ventura, which was pretty heavy, and he's just like, "No, seriously, you just gotta go." You just got to go. He goes, you get crushed. You get crushed, but it's really fun. Like, <laughs> no, I paddled out. I was like, see ya. I'm going, I'm going back down to Malibu. <laughs> yeah. He's the best. But yeah, I mean, I, I would say most of my um fitness comes from the surfing, but I go to the gym all the time. I just don't, I, I can't Do handle following. No, no, no. I can't handle following people who just like fucking selfie at the gym all day. And it's like half of surfing now. And it just bothers me to my core for some reason. I'm just like, are you a fitness guy? Like, are you a surfer? Like you don't even surf. Like you just post in the gym <laughs> and stop. But I don't know. Talking. So I never, I never stop share talking about them. Nathan Florence. <laughs> oh, Nathan goes off, dude. He's, he's not even the worst though. There's all kinds. <laughs> But Nathan, I like can't follow those guys for some reason. Nathan's like, pretty yeah, hardcore yeah. though. I was yeah. supposed to have Nathan on the show because uh, CBDMD sponsors the show, and they also sponsor him. Yeah, and uh, and I was like, yeah, I'll talk to him because I think he like, I think he's hardcore about CrossFit. Oh, he's super. Him and his his um, their married wife are like both. His wife is a badass too. Oh, They're really? like, oh, she's gnarly, dude. You should. Um, Look at her. She's like gorgeous, but she could probably just break either of us in half. <laughs> She's a badass. Mahina is her name. Um, but yeah, they both go so hard. But they like love it, you know. Like I don't know, it's different. There's, there's all, like a different all those, vibe. They're having fun. All those guys on the North Shore got really into it for a while, and yeah. I went over there, and Jamie Sterling took me to some gym one time that was like, he's like, you want to go? You want to go CrossFit? And I said, yeah. It was like in some guy's house <laughs> like, I yeah. some guy. and I'm like, is this, he's like, yeah, it's just his house. It's okay. He, he doesn't care. And I'm like, oh, I, I kind of feel awkward working out in some guy's house. Like he's got a family. There. <laughs> yeah. In the, yeah. And he like uh, flipping the tires off of his truck. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I've never understood the flipping the tire shit. Like it's just a it's good just, look, dude. It's a good look. Well, I just saw my friend the other day and he's a great friend of mine, Zach Forrest, and he does these crazy workouts and he's, a, he's a former Navy SEAL and he's into tactical shit. And he was wearing a, a Kevlar vest, like a, like a flak jacket that they use for a weight vest. Like it, you put like 20 or 40 pounds or whatever. And then he's throwing this uh, sandbag over a, 
over like a, a rack. And then he goes to the other side and he picks it up and throws it back over. And I'm like, you know, there's like, you could go work construction <laughs> and get paid to do this. Like, like, <laughs> Like, do something a little more productive <laughs> with all this effort <laughs> well like i feel like i'm either gonna pay somebody to do that or i'm gonna go get that job and get paid to do it it just seems like if you're yeah. doing it and you're not getting paid but i didn't know you go to the gym i figured you for a lazy fuck that i thought you only went to the gym to rehab when you're injured no i do prehab so i don't get injured that's my thing yeah. No, I go to the gym like all the time and it's just like to, yeah, stop myself you, from getting injured. Do your sponsors put pressure on you to do that? No, no. I think honestly, they probably like, as a free surfer, you're supposed to like live that lazy, like I don't care lifestyle. <laughs> they really like see me posting pictures, like chugging a beer or something. You're like, yeah, I don't <laughs> fucking care. Smoking a cigarette like all the kids in Australia. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's like a funny thing um you know that's what's funny is like the free surfer air guy like if you're typically like within surfing is like that super like laid back hipster grunge guy um smoking cigarettes drinking beers and not giving a fuck and that's what's weird about me is i also big wave surf which is the super serious like clean cut like freaking gym guy and the funniest part the funniest part about that is just something that i won't tell you the big wave guys are way crazy partiers than those hipsters. Like, <laughs> they just fucking hide it, dude. They're they're the psychos. <laughs> like, I can go out and drink with the hipster guys for a couple of days. But like one night with the big wave guys, you're like, holy shit, these fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> it's so the, funny. It's, do you do any of the breathing shit, like the no. exercises? Dude, just, I don't. Know. I th- I think Wim Hof's a fraud. <laughs> 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 that fucking guy bothers me so much. I just like. I think he's just good at something, and then try to uh, sell it to the world. And it's like, uh, and it's just like, no, you're just a freak. Like, none of these lessons, or not many of these lessons, seem universal. But that's just me. Did, I'm just. Uh, did you ever say. see when Kelly? Did you see when Kelly Slater did it and passed out? <laughs> no, I. Oh. I mean, I'm. Oh, oh, I got to, f- I have to find you the video. Cause like I went to Wim Hof. Like I went, my buddy was called me. He's like, you got to get over to my house. I got Wim Hof here. You got to come over. And I was like, what? And he's like, you got, and I kind of was like, what are these people? What's everyone doing? What is that? Why? And they're like, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> and I'm a cynic about everything. So I'm like, there's yeah. no way this is crazy shit. So then like two weeks later, I see Kelly Slater doing, I'm like, oh my God. It's like, it it became so trendy so quickly. Like everyone was doing it. And I see Slater, he he posted, I think on his Instagram, they had him do like the, the 15 second hold or something. And then he stands up and they tell him to like shake it out or something. It was something I hadn't done or hadn't seen. And all of a sudden Kelly just goes, "Mm," and falls right on his face. (laughs) Yeah, dude, that shit. Awesome. I don't. I don't know about it. It seems so weird to me, but I think it's probably because it just got so trendy. I hated it. But um, well, I actually here's what I do. Oh, go ahead. Oh, that'll do it. Well, I know this. Like all the breathing shit I've done to try to increase my breath hold. Sure, I can do it on dry land. I can hold it, or I can sit in the water and relax and do it. But I've never been in a like wave of consequence where uh, where like the panic doesn't ensue, or I do like force myself to relax. But I don't feel like. I've expanded my lungs and I'm like, I'm Superman now. And I can stay down here for three minutes because I always just tell people they're like, how hard is it? To-? I go try running up like three flights of steps and then hold your breath. See how long yeah. you can hold it. Cause that's what it's like when you're surfing. No, that's it's such a trippy thing. Cause you, you, um, I've, I've read a lot of books about like, um, fear and all this shit. It's super fascinating to me. And like the flow state and all that. And, um, like your optimum heart rate to like perform at your best, what what it's like one twenty to something else. Like it's kind of fast to like the flow state, um, you know. And um, so that's the funniest thing is you got to go from one twenty to like getting your heart rate down as fast as you can as soon as you fall, which is like the funniest hardest thing ever. <laughs> but um, yeah, I spearfish a lot, so that's like where I learned to hold my breath, and that's nice too because you like. Spearfishing helps with big wave surfing more. Those dive classes, those um, 
people from the Big Island do are, are amazing. I've always wanted to do that, where they can take anyone and get them to like five minutes and a hundred feet, and five minutes and a hundred feet within like a week. So for the four day class, which is pretty crazy. Um, how deep? But, how deep do you go when you spearfish? Um, the deepest I go, like I could get to a hundred feet for sure. If Shut I was just up. going down and back up. Yeah. Like if the way they do it, for sure, I can do that. But um, With a rope. Yeah. And they have like a ton of weight and you like yeah. have a balloon yeah. on the way up or some shit. But um, like for like actually hunting fish, because you have to spend some time at the bottom to like get a fish. You can't just like dive down like, oh, look, a fish. Boom. Um, probably like at 80 feet, I have a hard time shooting a fish. Like. That's like where I'm maxing out. Like sixty how do you, feet, I'm how, totally fine. How do you get down 70. to sixty feet though? What how do you get down there? Do you weight yourself? Yeah, yeah. I wear like ten, twelve pounds of weight. But that's what's good about that as far as like um training for surfing is is it's such a mind game when you're diving because the whole time is like when you're diving to sixty, seventy feet or whatever it is. Like eighty, I I barely ever go eighty. I try to stay away from that. But like sixty feet I'm dive a lot. And you got to think like the whole way down, like, oh, I got to come back up, you know, like, so it's such a funny thing. Like if you start panicking on the way down, that's like when all the, like, you got to be completely calm on the way down, which is, is like a lot like surfing. Cause you like start to run out of breath and you're like, okay, I still got to swim 60 feet up. And especially when you shoot it, but it's also scary. Like sometimes you'll see a fish and you just completely forget that you're even holding your breath. It's like a good fish. You're like, oh my God. And you'll just sit there for like a minute and just be like, holy shit, I'm fucking out of air. I'm still down here. But but your lungs expand or oh wait, they expand as you go up, right? I think so. I mean, a lot of the time, the couple of times, like spearfishing is gnarly. Like I actually lost a really good friend of mine that spearfishing. He like blacked out at like 100 feet and he, he ended up passing away. And it's like, so it's, it's so fucking scary. Like... Um, but a lot of people black out right at the top, which is like, you know, they call it shallow, shallow water blackout because yeah. the one or two times I've actually gotten close to blacking out, it was after I popped my head up and took a breath, like after the dive, oh, it was like, Whoa. and then like, Oh, like wake up and my guns, like six inches from my hand floating down. Um, and that's like a common thing is you pass out, like right when you get to the surface or really close to the surface. But that's it. When when you're on your way back up, don't you have to like stop? Like, oh no, because you're not you're not. No, that's only when you inhale oxygen down. Oxygen, right? Pure oxygen. Yeah, so you can you can come up as fast as you want. Yeah, but that's like a also like you need to go slow because if like you go fast, you burn more oxygen than you're saving. Right. Right. So it's like a weird thing where like everything you do to spear fishing is really slow. Oh, Which is good because underwater you don't have any control when you're getting pounded by a wave, so you just so, you so try to I, make I, it slow. I don't give a shit about them, but I know everyone listening wants to know. What about when you see a shark and I and you're like, oh, does it? No, like have you ever been down spear fishing? You see a shark and you're like, oh fuck, and it gives you a little bit of the like makes you anxious and gets your heart rate up too much. Um, I, I don't see is it's kind of sad actually. I'm weirdly obsessed with sharks they're like my favorite animal i fucking love them and i don't do you see follow, them that much do you, do you follow the malibu artist no oh dude if what you is love that? sharks this guy flies a drone over malibu every day and uh he just he's obsessed with sharks and wait till you see how many sharks we have we have oh, yeah, giant, awesome. gr- giant great whites everywhere and we've been like surfing with them every day and we had no idea yeah. and it's just like no one ever oh, gets they attacked can, they don't give a yeah. fuck um no that's such a and funny thing it actually makes you less afraid of sharks because you're like oh they were there all day every day <laughs> yeah and no, you know, maui they, they, oh god they you know they say that they don't dolphins and uh sharks that i've always heard if you see dolphins just know there's no sharks around because sharks are they show dolphins and sharks. He on his page, dolphins and sharks like playing with each other. <laughs> oh yeah, no sharks will follow dolphins because dolphins are super messy eaters and they'll clean it up. 
Like they'll leave a lot of scraps when they like feed on the fish pile. So the sharks will follow them. Um, yeah. <laughs> but Maui has like a lot of sharks actually. We but um, tigers and tigers and makos and we have tigers. Too? No, I mean maybe the odd one. We get like a great white once a winter somewhere. But um, there's tons of tiger sharks, and I think we had like we were like the second worst shark bite place for a while, like in America besides Florida, except for people here actually die because they're tiger sharks. But um, we have a very specific season where it's like, um, the it's so funny. There's, there's this plant that blooms and so they say like, Oh, like the old Hawaiian thing is like, Oh, and the willy willy blooms. Is that what it is? I think it's like, Oh, yeah. No, what fucking plant is it? Anyway, it was red flower. And when you bloom, you're not supposed to go in the water or like fish or dive or whatever, but it's like, um, from September to like end of November, and I guess it's their mating season. And I always thought it was like um, that they get more aggressive during their mating season, but I guess it's because the big females get pregnant and they're too lazy to catch their normal prey, so they'll try new stuff. And that's why there's so many shark attacks. Oh, that's spooky. That's good. It's like, is, but it's like, I mean, it makes me feel better because I used to think it was like because the ma- males get all testosterone out and get aggressive, which I guess also happens, but it's more rare. It's more like big females that are too lazy to catch like a t- turtle. I thought it was like a big like Lenny of mice and men, just like, you know, like the big dumb shark that's like and sees like a human and goes home and all the other sharks are like, you fucking idiot. What are you no. doing? <laughs> They're going to kill us now. And he's like, I just wanted to try it. <laughs> no, I think the big ones know better. You know, it's like it's usually the young males that um are aggressive and they'll like bite people, but they never die. But like, um, I guess the big pregnant females are the ones like when you hear about someone who actually gets eaten, like and dies from a tiger shark, which super super rare, obviously. But um, that's that's usually what that is. But we had one Honolulu Bay, right? Oh yeah. That was gnarly, dude. My friend really? fucking ran on that guy. I mean, my friend was right behind him in the water and had to, like, give him CPR, and he ended up dying, like, in my friend's arms. It was so gnarly. And that was in, like, three feet of water, like, jumping off the yeah. dock there because it's a river mouth. So sharks will swim up the river mouth, and, you know, after, like, a after it rains a lot because, like, sometimes pigs and shit get washed down yeah. the river. Yeah, I almost, uh, I, almost surfed, I almost surfed that spot alone. Because you left me in Hawaii that week when uh, oh I know when you never surf Honolulu alone come on there's eighty I, I people was, out every time <laughs> no it was empty and I was gonna go out but I was like isn't this where some guy died? like that's always my luck I'm like aren't I in the spot where somebody yeah else died? I mean I've that's it's just a you know numbers game you, you know eventually if humans and in, interact with the ocean enough they're gonna end up near a shark and eventually if they end up near enough sharks they're going to end up next to one that's either really hungry or kind of an asshole um which is how i look at it because like i've been spearfishing my whole life and i've never seen a tiger shark still i've been out actually when my um when one ate all the fish off of our buoy i never got to see it though i've heard they chase you guys when you have them like or not abalone divers abalone divers get it all the time yeah they get great whites and and uh but i've heard like they chase your uh don't you like hang your fish off a line far behind you no <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do i i wear them on my belt <laughs> which is super sketchy <laughs> yeah what are you a fucking idiot <laughs> yeah but no it's it's the line Can't... i guess it scares certain fish away when you're like diving down because the line's attached to your gun and they see it and they don't want to come close yeah but like if you come up you just shot a fish. You come up to the top, don't you? Take the fish off, throw it in a boat or something, and then no, I just put it on my all by belt and swim with it for the next hour. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. Sharks aren't as gnarly as you think because I I swim around, I've swam miles with dead fish hanging off of me and never see them. I did the other day though. I saw one of the most of aggressive mind. sharks I ever saw. I um, there's a certain type of fish where you um, we were probably in like fifty maybe 60 feet of water, 50 ish. And, um, some fish, you like drop your gun and the fish will t- check it out on the bottom. So I was just like sitting at the top and I just shot, a, um, we have these groupers that are really invasive 
and they eat everything else. So they're the fish everyone shoots to chum to try and get like bigger right. fish to come in. So I just shot one of those and I chummed it. So there's like scales in the water everywhere and like um, the fish heads floating down. And my gun probably smelled like it because it was just on my shaft. And I threw my gun down at like 50 feet and I was just like breathing up to go down, get it and try to shoot one of these fish. And um, it was only like a five foot, probably like white tip, like reef shark. They're the most common ones. They're super minor. Uh, we see them a lot. But it fucking came in so hot. And, like, out of nowhere, when I dropped my gun, it started doing, like, figure eights around my gun. And I was really scared it was going to bite my gun because, like, because, um, you know, the rubbers are cocked. So if, like, anything bites <laughs> it, the rubber the rubbers will break. And I was just like, no. So I, like, swam down and tried to scare it away. And it kind of looked at me and was, like, it was so aggressive. But I was like, I was like, ah! I, saw, like, I was yelling I saw, at it. And I was trying to scare it away. <laughs> I said, how funny would it be if it bit the rubbers and the the gun shot you? <laughs> I know, dude. I could. <laughs> Kill, Alby Lair was killed by a shark. He got bit yeah. by a shark. No, the shark <laughs> shot him. <laughs> exactly. That would, that'd be the greatest way to die. Ever. It would. <laughs> how did you die? I got shot by a shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That would be. Um. So you have your gym, uh, your little gym thing you got to do where you got to go stand on a BOSU ball and balance. Exactly. That's probably exactly what I'm going to be doing. One footed, a couple, some stretching, you make, maybe some Pilates. You, do you make your sponsors pay for that shit? No, but it's a tax write off. Yeah. <laughs> Did your sponsors take care of the, the veil thing where they, is that how you got recommended to him? Cause he is like the shit. Um, I got recommended other... from a friend who, who yeah. had that surgery. Um, but no, no, there's nothing in my contract. It, honestly, um, they, that injury, we have pretty much all of us have in our contract. Like if you're out for more than like five months or something, you're like legally allowed to just get fired. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, that was kind of a scary thing for me, but all my sponsors stuck with me and they were fine. But that's uh, awesome. Yeah, but no, they, um, there's there's no health insurance for surfers. That's like a weird. Are, yeah, there's thing. the same. Uh, we're the same thing with comedy. One one club owner was really cool, and started a mental health thing. Like, got a therapist on at a comedy club in L.A. on duty for comedians because so many comedians had committed suicide. Yeah, and uh, and they just had a therapist if anyone ever needed it to just go talk to. I thought that was a really cool thing to do. No, it would be. That's what always tripped me out about um surf companies was um like the guy sitting in the office like coming up with the budget for the next year has health insurance and then the people they hire to go fucking surf big ways don't. <laughs> and I'm just like, yo. And then I tried to like this is something I tried to bring up to like a couple people. I was like, why don't we like fight for this? And Pretty much the census was like, oh, they'll just take it out of our paycheck and then we won't have like yeah. high salaries and we'll just be fucked. And I was just like, okay, is that really how it is? That's just how it's yeah. going to be. Yeah, because I'll tell you what happened to me last week. I was supposed to be playing the Charlotte Comedy Zone on Wednesday, but I got canceled because a guy brought a gun in to Craig Robinson's show on Saturday and shot up the club. Really? So Yeah. So uh, he just Did came he kill in. anyone? No, luckily, no. He... uh uh, it was in between, it was in between shows. And, wait, wait, uh, wait, wait. When was this? Was, was this when I was in LA? Uh, last Saturday. This... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Dude, there was a huge shooting when I was there, like a block away. No, from no, the no. Theater. This was, this was in Charlotte. Cause I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, right okay. Now. Okay. Okay. So Saturday well, night, the guy comes in and he goes, Hey, I have tickets. And they're like, no, you don't have tickets to this show. You have tickets to another show. He's like, well, I want to come in now. And they're like, well, you can't come in now. And he just pulls his gun out. He goes, I'm going in now. And they were like, okay, go ahead. So he goes in the room and they close the doors behind him. And then he shot at the wall. And then he put his gun down. They had called the police and he just waited for the police to come. But they go, he had tickets to another show. And I'm like, did he have tickets to my show? <laughs> and I was like, I hope. He oh. walked in and he's like, and he's not here. Fuck. <laughs> 
he he was uh he was a white tip reef shark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Coming in no, hot. So the guy so I told the like a week before I was having dinner with a couple of comics and the owner of the club. And I said, Hey, I think, uh, I think like all the clubs should start getting metal detectors. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I think clubs, I go, I feel like we're a soft target and people are having fun and they're happy. And it's like a horrible place for like, you know, people that are upset at the world and want to like, make people, you know, upset people and, you know, the shooter type. And I go, I think we're not a safe place. And I, I would love to see clubs just put it. So I called a friend of mine that owns a club and I'm like, you guys need to put a metal detector in. And he's like, who's going to pay for that? You want to come out of your pay? And I'm like, it's like $4,000. Just fucking put a metal detector. And he's like, oh, it'll slow everything down and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, remember this conversation. Just remember yeah. Yeah, you know, like when, because we live in this country where everybody's like, we're going to let everybody have their guns. We're not going to stop that. Might as well. Like, like I dropped my kids off at school and I was like, one day my daughter goes, we had a, we had a mean person drill <laughs> like or a bad person drill. Oh like, my gosh. So gnarly. Drill? She goes, oh, we all go to the middle of the room and huddle together. And, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, what? So I called my friend who's a like hardcore, like SWAT team cop. And I go is this like the, and he's like, no, that's like the worst, that's the worst thing you could do. Yeah, I know. So I, was, I was, I listened to all this stuff about that recently and they were saying like, they're like, oh, we want one entrance to school. So who said that? That's, the worst, that, that's the a fishbowl. Yeah, I know. And I was like, that's the dumbest fucking thing ever. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Luckily Hawaii never had that, um, has that bad. I think we have really strict gun laws, which didn't, Makes me think they work because there's no shortage of angry people here. <laughs> there's fights <laughs> all the time, but no one gets there's, shot. There's, there's a little you know? bit of there's a little bit of crystal meth in Hawaii. Just yeah, there's tons bit. of crystal meth here, and fucking people getting in fights all the time, but no one really dies because I swear it's just hard to get a gun here. Um, so Are that's my that's with... my basis on that. But um, we had an active we... or not an active shooter, but we had a guy walk into our, my elementary school a crazy guy with a, like a big gun one time when I was a kid. And I remember huddling like under the desk and I was just like, that seems dumb. He could just walk in. <laughs> I was like, I was in like fifth grade. I was like, this, this yeah. is dumb. <laughs> yeah. They should just say everybody run. Yeah. You know, like a, they, some of you are going to get shot. Serpentine, everybody. Serpentine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zigzag. I, I had a were you in Hawaii when the alarm went off saying that, or was that only on Oahu? Oh my God. That was the most fucked up shit ever. That was like the weirdest thing that no one really like. Um, I feel like people didn't talk about that as much as they should have. So we were, I'll tell you that story. It was fucking crazy. So we were all at, um, just down from my house. There's this breakfast spot. And there was a jaw swell that day, like a really big one. So I had like, eight people staying with me from fucking South Africa, Australia, like everyone, you know? Um, and we were like ordering breakfast and it was just a full fucking apocalypse movie moment where everyone's phone, you hear it like, like everyone's phones, like in the whole place. And it was like in the middle of, um, you know, when our super cool president at the time was like, fucking shitting on kim jong-un on twitter or something and there was like an alert like oh north korea like launched a missile like a ballistic missile find shelter immediately i forget exactly what it said but i think that was it and we were all just like looked at it and like disbelief and then like looked at each other like oh shit this is probably real and i i am um, like immediately called my friend who was like um he's like a he was a seal at the time he, or he, i think he was like a trainee to be a seal or whatever. I was like, dude, what's going on? Like, you're going to go to war, I think. Like, I think we're all fucked. And he was like, telling me, he's like, he's like, oh, like, that's, if this is true, like, um, he was like, you should find a gun, probably, like, because either they're going to, um, because, like, after they would launch a missile strike on Oahu, they'd probably try to invade the islands to, hold it because like hawaii is like one of the most important like military outposts in the world yeah 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 
um, because it's so centralized in the Pacific. So he's like, there'd probably be a ground force almost immediately after. Like, and so if they bomb Oahu, then you guys are going to be like fucking Red Dawn the next day. (laughs) And I was just like, what? (laughs) And they didn't correct it for 35 minutes. So for 35 minutes. That long? Yeah. So it wasn't like, oh shit. And then like, by the time it like set in, we were like, it was like, it was so funny because we just ordered breakfast and I was like, I was with like a bunch of my really good friends because it was Joss. I was like, like, you know what? Like, I was like, let's just eat, dude. I was like, let's just sit here and eat. (laughs) And I was like, I think I ordered like something healthy because of Joss. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the waffle. I'm going to get the fully loaded waffle (laughs) side of bacon. (laughs) We're going to fucking go. (laughs) I really did that. You didn't want to go say goodbye to your parents or anything like that. I think they were with us or they were like surfing or something. The funniest part was two of my like best friends didn't say anything to us and just bailed and went home and like locked all their windows and shit. And I was like, Oh, cool. I was like, good to know that about you guys. (laughs) I just heard on a podcast I was listening to New York city is doing this like infomercial thing. They're like in the event of a nuclear emergency, they're like, go, get in your house, close the door. And I'm like, what, what, why are you saying this? <laughs> like, like, yeah, is this, that... is there a threat? Like, uh, is this, is, could this happen? And they're like, close your doors. Do not leave. If you're outside, when it happens, go and shower, take all your clothing that was, that has radioactive dust and throw it outside of your house. And it's like, what the fuck? And, uh, <laughs> but Putin, that's why I, I do. T- that's scary. <laughs> I know, but Tulsi Gabbard was saying that like how fucked up it was that someone did that. She said that like there were people in Hawaii that were like, I got two kids. I got one at this school and one at this. Who do I go see? Like, I'm about to die. I've got like a half hour to live. Do I go see my daughter or my son? And I know which one I'd go see. Yeah, everyone does. They don't. Yeah. They force that decision. I'd go see my ex-girlfriend and tell her it was her fault. (laughs) <laughs> exactly no and that was the other thing is um apparently there's like these rumors around maui that i've, I've almost had confirmed by my one friend a friend of a friend that has like or my friend has all these his like um buddies are all in the special forces and they like one time hinted that there's all these crazy military bases here like that no one knows about so this would be like where the counter-strike missile would come from like there's all these like you know, oh, yeah, because probably, yeah, probably they're Alaska because it's so close. Yeah. You know, well, like, no, no, yeah. no. I, th- we know there's a ton, a huge military base on Oahu. But I was yeah. like, when they said it, I was like, oh, my God. Like, maybe they know about the secret. <laughs> the secret one's here. <laughs> We're all fucked. <laughs> That's what I thought. I was like. I didn't sure know that- it was. I thought it was like five minutes later they told you guys it. 35 30. minutes. We finished breakfast and we're just tripping. Like, did it hit yet? Like, and there's so many people on their phone, like, where, like, service basically just fucking sucked for everyone. You know, because everyone was panicking, calling each other and all that stuff. So, it, like, clogs the network. So, we, like, yeah. couldn't really get any updates. And then, finally, there was, like, the second message, like, disregard. 35 minutes. We sat that's there how, thinking like that's how, we were going to war. That's how New York City was. I was in New York for 9-11 and you couldn't call anyone. Phones just went because they were just overloaded. And yeah. I had friend I was getting emails from friends going, Are you alive? Like, are you okay? What's going on? And then the same thing happened. I was there for the Malibu fires, and the same thing, all the phones went out and went dead. And I realized like you gotta have a satellite phone. <laughs> Like, I know. I'm actually gonna. I'm buying a satellite phone because I go back into the trails sometime really far, and I saw this. I just read about a guy getting bit by a snake, and uh, he like didn't make it out of the woods. Like it, it starts to overtake you, and yeah. he just started getting blood and like the weirdest effect ever. And so he said after that he went and bought a satellite phone because his phone wasn't getting service, and he could have called and said this is where I am and given a GPS. But like, no, yeah, I'm. I'm, I decided I'm getting a satellite phone. I know my one, my one photographer buddy, the guy who has all those friends of the special forces, he works for that North American rescue company who makes like trauma kits. And yeah. I have one of those for like, but when he travels, cause he travels here, he used to be a surf photographer. Um, now he does that. And he, he, he would have the craziest, like 
he'd be the best guy to run into a tragedy with. Just have the best first aid kit, knew how to apply everything, then like satellite phone straight to his buddies and special forces and shit. <laughs> I was like, I'll go to Mexico with you and fucking surf some cartel waves. Let's go. <laughs> well, there's that insurance. My dad wants me to buy it all the time. There's some insurance that they'll like helicopter you out of wherever you are and just get yeah. you to like, like I've always to, heard like, of that. Is that. You think that's I real? Swear. Like, I know it's real. I know it's real. Cause I have like a, you know, a rich Malibu friend that had to have it done in the Mentwise or something. He was surfing and hit the reef and they were like, Hey man, you know, like he was going to have to take like the whole boat of all the guys on the boat trip back. And they were like, well, thanks for ruining our trip. And he's yeah. like, hold on, hold on. And like a helicopter came and got him and was like, yeah. all right, see you guys. So that would I don't, be I don't know who makes that insurance, but, but you should have it. Um, Travel all right, I've, I've kept you on forever. Uh, you'd got to go do your little workout. I do. I, this is perfect time. Actually, it's 1030. It's 1010 now. We're good. Um, what you want to, uh, who are Are you still with June shine? Yeah, I am still with June Shine. Are you are I'm you a still... part owner of that company? I am. I was the that's the first cool part owner. World. Really? Um, well, yeah. I was like my buddy who had a finance background started. He's CEO. My really good friend Forrest is the COO. So he had like a background in um, filming and stuff. And then our other buddy Kevin, who he's like owned a couple companies and stuff. So they were the three like initial ones, and they and the brewer. At the time, it was making the actual stuff, Josh. And then they brought me on as like the first co-owner after that. Um, yeah, that's my only hope at retiring uh, and, and owning a house in Hawaii. Well, I mean, look at those guys, all like all the guys over in uh, uh, the Gold Coast that all were part owners of that brewery. Walter, right? The yeah, one? they all made a, they made a fortune. Yeah. I, I hope I do that we keep, um, it's grown. I feel like they sold when it was a small group. Our company is so big already. Like there's been so many more fundraising rounds and stuff that I wish I owned a bigger chunk being one of the first. Um, mm-hmm. but it's a pretty big company. So it's my, it's, <laughs> if you know anything, I mean, everyone knows about when COVID happened, all these fucking small towns, Real estate got absolutely fucked because everyone was moving out of the cities. Maui is like ridiculous. It costs like eight hundred grand for a fucking teardown. Yeah. Um. So it's my one shot at owning property here. I always say, like, (laughs) if June Shine sells for huge, then I might be all right. And then otherwise. I'll you probably be a miserable you, ex pro surfer. You, you just gotta wait for your parents to pass away. <laughs> yeah, otherwise I'm waiting for my parents to die. <laughs> and I got a cute little half acre. Um, <laughs> that they they that, probably bought for like forty grand. <laughs> I know, and now it's probably worth yeah, like eight hundred grand. Yeah. Um. Well, thanks for doing the show. I appreciate it. Um. Yeah. Sorry it took so long. Glad yeah. we finally got to do it. So glad I never had to surf Jaws, and so glad. I know we I didn't still even talk about our potential project. It still might still happen one day, dude. Well, you know, I've turned it into like a TV show. I'll tell you, all, I'll, t- I'll turn this. Off. I don't want people to know this, um, but I'm I'm still never surfing it. I've yeah, I've just will. come to the conclusion. No, no, no. I've come to the conclusion. I like what I, I'll drive the Wave Runner. I'll tow you in. I that's all I do. I'm about to go out on the lake right now. <laughs> And just, I, I, all I do all day long is I follow around wake boats. <laughs> then, just, people are wake surfing and I just look for their big waves and I jump behind them and they get really mad because I'm close. <laughs> that sounds pretty fun. And my daughter, my daughter does it with me and she'll like, she sits in front of me and she's like, dad, dad, hit that one. She's like, she'll be like, she'll be screaming, she'll be like, dad, wake boat. <laughs> like, <laughs> we just go get like massive air but um they have uh my in-laws have the uh what is it the the sea dude gtx 300 is that like a couple of jet ski no no it's the it's a sea dude like wave runner 
but it's so I've got it going 74 miles an hour. Oof, that's so fun. Fast jet skis are so fun. I need to take that's my nap. So it's been fun. way too long. So fun. Um, like this one, if you just hit, if you hit it, it'll pop out of the water. Oh, that's so it, fun. It's that, it's that fast. That was like, um, it's weird though. We can't use those in waves cause they suck up too much foam when you're like in the whitewater picking someone up. So you need like a special or our, we use all Yamaha's usually the CDs. Really? I just suck foam and spit it out the back. So you just like, when you're in front of a big wave, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> I'm so glad you just told me that. Yeah, I I've like, seen a couple of them out there, but I know they don't go, they don't do well on foam. I'm so glad you told me that because I was like thinking, uh, <laughs> if my, if my mother-in-law was going to sell them, I was just like, Hey, just give me one. I'll buy it and I'll take it back to California. And then I get out there and be like, this doesn't fucking work. <laughs> no, it worked fine. Like towing into like small waves and stuff, but on big waves, when you do the pickup in front of the big ones, you're in like, you know, a foot or two of foam. So you need a jet ski. Like you'll see guys rocking it back and forth to try and catch the actual water. Cause if they're just sucking foam, they're not moving. Worst wipeout, uh, wave runner or surfing. When, which have you wiped out worse on? It was that jaws one. We talked about where I got my concussion for sure. Yeah. And I was paddling that day. Have you had some bad wave? No, but I'm saying not towing. Like, have you been driving the, the, the wave runner where you've gotten, I've seen. Oh so no, I've never lost wave. a ski. Really? Yeah, never. Well, I'm wow. usually not running safety that often. I, I did. My new girlfriend's actually a big wave surfer, so she's the last year is the first time I've like drove a ski. Um, and I was towing her in, which is fucking scary. And it's yeah. also really frustrating because people are trying to drop in on her, and I gotta like, can't can't let that happen. It's even worse if it's someone you're actually like care about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I saw, I saw, I saw a video where you almost killed her. Which one? You, you went surfing like you, you sent me a clip of you. Uh, like you surf dropped in, like there's like rocks right in front of you. And then, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then she got, she got hit with her board. Yeah. That was pretty good. She's tough. That was though. pretty, gnarly. that was pretty gnarly. Yeah. But so, all right. It's scary driving her. All right. Well, listen, uh, anything you want to, don't you have a new movie? No, I'm going to soon. I thought you went I, to California. I thought that's why you flew to LA. Oh shit. Yeah. Sorry. Well, I didn't do that. I was just in a movie because I've uh, been editing most of my stuff. So I don't think of it as that. Um, no, yeah, they, um, it's called sweet adventure. I don't know where it's going to come out exactly. He's still shopping around like showing premieres and shit. But it's really, it's a really, um, Peter Hamlin made it and he does, it's like really endless summer esque. It's like, I'm almost acting in it, which is freaking pretty funny. And there's all these funny skits. It's me and my ex girlfriend, which is even funnier. So, there, <laughs> so, so, wait, so there's actually a funny movie. A it's funny. funny. Movie. You, you'll you appreciate it. There's some pretty well, good humor in it. Why has no one done a mockumentary of surf films? Dude, they have. You should watch Who Death to Hipsters. Who did it? Um, these kids from Florida, I think. It was really it? funny. Oh, it is? I got to watch it. Yeah. It's like an old movie. I remember when we were touring our first movie, Attractive Distractions, they were also touring Death to Hipsters, and we stayed and watched it like a couple times. It's fucking pretty funny. But it was like, okay. it's less relevant now because like hipsters are different. Um, I don't know what they're doing now. They're still out there. But they were like really hitting surfing hard at the time. So it was freaking hilarious. Well, you should, I mean, there's so much funny about surfers and surf films and, and even the weirdos that watch surf films. Cause I'll never understand. I like to watch you guys surf. I like good waves, but I don't need to see 7,000 over and over and over and over again when you're doing the same thing. And, uh, <laughs> it's not the also, same thing. Okay. It's very I different. I know, but every once it's, it's like, it's like, yeah, I know. It's like, look, I did a cut back here. But my 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 foot wasn't on the tail pad right there. Um, then what I never understand, I want somebody to make a film is all the aftermaths. Like all you ever see is a wipeout and then you never see like, when did he pop up? Where is he? Where's his board? Is he choking? Is he coughing up a lung? Did he cry? Did he, you know, like I, I hear all these stories. The one where I'm, stories uh, of like, God, they're like, oh yeah, he climbed back on the boat. He's like, I'm never surfing again. How can we never see that? Yeah. 
I feel it. Did you, have you seen if if anyone wants to see that part of it? Um, the first like two minutes, we did a film called Opinionated Passion. It's on YouTube. But the first two minutes is this um, my best friend Matt filming me with his iPhone, where I get washed into the rocks and like. It's oh, like I remember a, that one. Oh yeah, and I like really, probably pretty close to dying. And is it, that was, where you it climbed, was like, one of, is that where you climbed up on the rock? Yeah, I climbed up got, on a rock and got washed off and like bounced into all these rocks. It's like something I've watched it so many times. And I think if you did that night or a hundred times, like one of them, you'd end up without a sc- scrape like I did. Like, I have no idea how that fucking happened. That was like almost was made me believe whole, in God. Was, it, was that at that <laughs> terrible slab wave? Yeah, the wave I saw you that yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that. yeah, you got to see the rocks I washed into. <laughs> Fuck that. I was like, you should have really? seen that day, though. It was like way bigger the day I got washed into the rocks and, and it was ugly. And uh, I was, it was like, um, I remember being embarrassed underwater because I thought I might die. And I went to like a, the Eminem concert on Oahu the day before and got pretty fucked up. And I was like, everyone's going to know, like, I, he's just the guy who died hungover <laughs> surfing. <laughs> I'm going to be that guy. Because he's, he's in an M&M concert. <laughs> Best thing ever. I almost died at a bachelor party once. I climbed on the roof. <laughs> we, well, this is terrible. We we left a bar. We were in Lake George, New York. And the they, they had this like minivan rented. And all the guys got in the minivan. And I jumped on the roof. And there was no roof rack. There were just those little rain gutters. And I thought they'd go, get off. Come on, we're all drunk. And like the cops will pull us over. Get off. My friend just guns it. And I think he's going to like stop at the end of the parking lot and try to like throw me off the front of the van, but he just keeps going and he drives seven miles, seven miles back to the place on windy Lake roads. And every time he went around a turn, it was like tubing, you know, when you see the turn coming and you move your weight to the other side, I would move my weight because by the end of the turn, my legs would be like off the roof of the car. And I just kept thinking, I'm like, okay, one of these turns I'm flinging off. I'm going to like hit a tree and die. And my parents are going to be like, oh yeah, our grown son. He was like 35. Yeah. He was at a bachelor party on the roof of a car. Yeah. And yeah. Died. Yeah. That's how he died. Yeah. Thanks son. So, <laughs> that's, oh. that's me. All right. Well, Hey, um, they, I want them all to go to your, uh, Instagram, which is, uh, live fast, die gay. Yeah, no, it's live fat, die hungry. Live, no, it's not. <laughs> live fast, die old. Live fat, die hungry. That's a, that's a. You should change it. I was going to, especially when I got up to two hundred ten pounds after surgery. That's when all my friends made fun of me and told me to change it. <laughs> live fat. What is it now? Live fast, die old. <laughs> live fast. That's so gay. Um, I know. Go to at. <laughs> Live fast, die old. I mean that in the gay sense of life. You know, I, I gotta never mind. Um, You're a comedian, dude. You're gonna get canceled. Ah, oh, already. I've been canceled <laughs> so many fucking times. Live at live fast, die old. Albie's one of the funnier surfers. I'll put you in the top. Three. <laughs> what a what a big exclusive list. <laughs> top top three funny. No, you're the you're the best big wave surfer that can do airs that's also funny how about that <laughs> oh it's a one person club but thank you <laughs> yeah so find them at, at um <laughs> i should delete that um someone will get mad I, those are the things that i get letters about or like emails about they're like oh, you always do such a nice job and then you did that and it was like you acting like a child frat boy and blah 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 and i'm like it's a yeah joke. it's 2022 get over it yeah. yeah okay um yeah so find them there and uh albie don't hang up because it has to upload for a second uh you guys know what to do rate review comment uh do what you do um yeah <laughs>